Welcome back. This is another exciting episode of Mr. Takeda Teaches Algebra. I'm your host, Mr. Takeda, and I'm going to teach you some algebra right now. This is lesson 1.3, in which we ask the question, how do you solve an equation that has variables on both sides? Well, believe it or not, you already have the tools. You should already know how to do this. It's just when to do it. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, the first thing we have here is a core concept. Uh, I kind of simplified this down from what the book has. But basically, we want to simplify one or both sides if necessary. So we've already talked about this word simplify. We know this means to do the math, right? If we just want to uh, add where we can add and multiply where we can multiply, etc. Do the math. By math, I say do the arithmetic, you know, add, subtract your simple operations. Let's say do the math operations. That would be real clear. Then we want to collect variable terms on one side and constant terms on the other using inverse operations. This is our new step. That's the lesson for today. And then number three, solve by isolating the variable using inverse operations. We know how to do that already. That goes back to lesson 1.1. So we're going to focus on this idea here of collecting variable terms on one side and constant terms, the numbers on the other side. Okay, let's get started here. These work. Okay, example one, solving an equation with variables on both sides. And uh, we have, I want to rewrite this here a little bit bigger, 10 minus 4x equals negative 9x. So the first thing we want to see is can we do any math? Can we simplify uh, either side? And the answer is we cannot. But I have variable terms on both sides of the uh, equal signs here. I have a, a negative 4x on the left and a negative 9x on the right. So we want to collect all of the x terms, all of the, all of the variable terms on one side. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 4x to the left side and that means I must also add it to the right side because negative 4x plus 4x, well, that becomes a 0. Now on the left side I have a 10 that's this 10 equals, I'm trying to keep my equal signs lined up here, uh, negative 9x plus 4x, negative 5x. Okay, so now we've uh, written that we have one step equation now because I've uh, collected all my variable terms on the right side, all my constants on the left side, and now I can just solve by using inverse operations, and I'm going to divide both sides by negative 5. And that gets me negative 2 equals x. Now, uh, I'm going to make a note of this here just to say, uh, you know, just leave the, uh, leave the x on the uh, right side. There's no, a lot of, a lot of ki time kids have the inclination to put, you know, to switch these around, x equals negative 2. They want to read it from left to right, but there's no reason to do that. Remember, the goal is to isolate the variable on one side it doesn't matter which side so in this in this case it's on the right side but this is the proper way the uh, solution should look okay let's look at example two here example two solving an equation with grouping symbols let me see if i can make this bigger voila 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 okay um Let's, uh, we want to simplify each side here. Now, on each side, I've got these parentheses, which is going to indicate now, if I look in the parentheses, I really can't do any math in there because I cannot, uh, I cannot uh, simplify 3x minus 4 because they're not like terms. Same thing for the right side. I cannot simplify 32x plus 56 because they are not like terms. So I go one step outside of those parentheses. Oh, we've got something to multiply each side here. 3 on the left side, 1 fourth on the right side. So let's do that. 3 times 3x is uh, 9x. Minus 3 times 4 is 12. Multiplying by a fraction is easy. Uh, if you're multiplying a whole number times a fraction, it really means to uh, multiply by the top and divide by the bottom in 
any order. It doesn't really matter. So really, this just says 32 times 1 divided by 4. That's 8. And this is 56 times 1, which is 56, divided by 4. So 4 goes into 5 uh, one time with uh, 1 left over, so 16. So this would be uh, 14. Okay, so now I've got this equation. I still have an X term on both sides. I still have constants on both sides. So what I'm going to try and do here, uh, and, and it doesn't really matter how you do this, um, but some ways you might end up with an extra step. So what I'm going to, I look at this and I say, well, if I subtract 8X from 9X, I'll end up with a positive X on the left side. If I do it the other way, subtracting 9X from 8X, it'll be a negative X on this side. And that gives me one more step. So I'm, I'm trying to avoid that. It's try to get directly to that X as quickly as possible. So I'll subtract uh, 8X from both sides. Uh, that gets me x on this side, 1x, bring down the negative 12, 8x minus 8x is 0, so I'll just bring down the 14. Okay, Now, to isolate the x even further, I want to get rid of the negative 12, so I'm going to add 12 to both sides. And that will result, negative 12 plus 12 is 0 x plus 0 is x, so x equals 26. x is 26. Okay, so make sure this one is in your notes, and if it's not, uh, pause the video and um, finish it up. Make sure that you understand how to do this, because at this point, I need you to pause the video and try this. There's only one try this problem. There's some more problems after this, but uh, go ahead and pause the video and try this. Um, get an answer, and uh, I'll have you put it into the uh, pod at the end of the uh, at the end of the video. Okay, so when you're done with this, we're moving on. A new core concept. We call these special solutions of linear equations because sometimes, sometimes. We won't have a solution when we're dealing with variables on both sides. And why is that? Well, let's take a look at what we, what we see here. An equation that is true for all values of the variable is called an identity and has infinitely many solutions. So I'm going to give you a simple example here. Say I said um, x plus uh, 7 equals x plus 7. Well, we know this to be true, but what does it mean x can be? It doesn't matter what x can be. x can be anything, any number, any real number, I should say. Because uh, whatever it is, it's going to be the same on both sides, and 7 is going to be added to both sides. So we say that this has infinitely many solutions, and that's a phrase you need to kind of uh, remember for these. And this type of equation is called an identity. It has infinitely many solutions. On the right-hand side, an equation that is not true for any uh, value of the variable has no solutions. So what would that kind of simple example look like? Well, that would say like x plus 7 equals x minus 2. There's no number I can fill in for the two x's here and make this true because these numbers would have to be the same. And on the left side, I'm increasing it by 7. On the right side, I'm decreasing it by 2. There's no number that will ever make this true. So we say that in this case, we have no solution. Okay, so let's take a look at, we're going to follow the same steps here. As we look at the examples here, we're going to follow the same steps that we would normally do to solve this. And uh, I'll explain as we go through this here. Okay, so on the first uh, example 3a here, I have some dis a distribution to do. 3 times 5x is a 15x. Plus 3 times 2 is 6 and that's equal to 15x. Now, what do we say we want it to do? Now, we can look at this one and see that there's no solution to this one, but we're gonna keep going here because I need you to see the rest of this here. We said that we would collect all of the variable terms on one side, so I'm gonna subtract 15x from the left side, and I'll subtract the same thing from the right side. So 15x minus 15x is zero. That leaves me six equal to zero 
And when my variables are gone, okay, so variables gone. And I have an untrue statement. Six does not equal zero, so that's an untrue statement. Then we say no solution. Now, when you're doing a problem like this, no solution is your answer. Six equals zero is not your answer. A lot of times uh, kids will leave six equals zero as their answer. And they did this work right, but that doesn't tell me they understand what this part means, the six equals zero. So remember, the, the, when we're trying to solve the equation, we want the value for the variable that makes the equation true. So in this case, there is no value for the variable that makes it true. So it's no solution. It is not six equals zero. Okay, let's take a look at the second example. Negative, I'm sorry, 3b. Negative 2 times 4. Negative 8y. Negative 2 times 1. Minus 2 equals negative 8y minus 2. So we can see we have the same thing on both sides here, but let's continue through with the same steps we would normally do. We want to try and collect the variable terms on one side. So I'm going to add 8y to the left and do the same thing to the right, which in both cases they cancel out. So what does that leave me with? Negative 2 equals negative 2. So once again, the variables are gone. And I have a true statement. So in this case, we say infinitely many solutions. That basically means any number, I can use any number in place of y in the original equation, and it will always be true. Okay. Um, get these into your notes. This is just something I don't want to kind of save for class. Um, it's basically a wrap-up of everything we've done here in the first few lessons. Um, steps for solving linear equations. Uh, distributive property to remove grouping symbols and then simplifying the expression on each side kind of really 1a and 1b collecting variable terms on one side of the equation and constant terms on the other that's what we just did if there's uh, variables on both sides isolating the variable this is the solving right this is the solving part and then checking your solution just double check to make sure that whatever answer you come up with makes the original equation true Okay, well, that's it for now, and uh, you're going to fill in your answer in the end of this pod, and I'll see you in class, or at least I'll see you on video. Thanks a lot, and have a great, great rest of your day. Bye-bye.